Hi, I'm Julianne Cost. Here are 10 recent enhancements made to Photoshop that I want to be sure that you didn't miss. Number one, select subject and remove background have been improved when the image processing is set to cloud. To do this, choose Photoshop, Settings, and Image Processing. On Windows, the Settings or the Preferences will be under the Edit menu. Then for Select Subject and Remove Background, select Cloud. This feature will require internet connectivity. Then in the Contextual Taskbar, I'll choose Remove Background. With the improved processing, we should see improvements in subject detection, masking of fine details, edge selections, and the selection of holes within an object. To compare, here are the results from the previous model in the previous version of Photoshop. Let's take a look at another example. Here is the original photo of the petrified tree, and then the results of using the current Remove Background technology set to cloud processing. When comparing that to the previous version, we can see cleaner edges and an improvement in the detection of the subject. And then this image, here is the original, and then the results of using the current Remove Background technology set to cloud processing, and again, when comparing it to the previous version, we see better subject detection and edge selections. Number two, when creating gradients, you can use the method drop-down menu to choose stripes to get abrupt transitions between colors, creating interesting backgrounds and effects. Number three, Adobe added more than 1,500 new fonts to the Adobe Type Library, including many of the most popular fonts of all time from Monotype, such as Helvetica, Gotham, and Avenir. Find these new fonts using More Fonts, or you can go to fonts.adobe.com and explore what's new from Monotype, or look at all new releases. Number four. The Frame tool now supports custom shapes. We can select the Frame tool or tap K and select the custom shape icon. I'll select one of the presets, but don't forget you can use the Shape Panels flyout menu to load additional legacy shapes and more, or even create your own shapes. Then drag in the image area to create the frame. Click on the edge of the frame to resize it. Double-clicking within the frame toggles between selecting the image content and the frame so that you can reposition them together, or double-click again and you'll only select the image content to move it independently from the frame. Number five, we can assign a composition reference image with Generate Image. Here, I wanna create a watercolor image of a cabin. I'll choose Generate Image and then add my prompt. I'll choose Art for the content type and use the effects to select the watercolor effect. For the style reference image, I'll use one of the gallery images. I like the subtle color palette of these two poppies. At this point, let's see what Photoshop generates. I'll speed this up a bit. I like the different generations, but it doesn't quite look like the cabin I had in mind. So I've created a rough sketch that I'm going to use as the composition reference image. We could start over and generate a new layer, but instead let's use the properties panel to keep the other options the same and simply choose the composition reference image. I'll keep the strength set high and then choose generate. This time Photoshop returns an image that's much more like the cabin that I sketched. In fact, it's a little too much like I sketched. It's a bit too simple. So to allow generate image a bit more flexibility with the composition, we can return to the composition reference image and then lower the strength. And then I'll choose generate again. I'm happy with these results because the composition has helped shape the outcome, but it's not as rough as my initial sketch. Number six, on the home screen, I'll choose generative workspace. This workspace is similar to Generate Image, but it was designed for quick ideation with the addition of variables. I'll use the same prompt that we previously used to generate the cabin, and I'll also use the same reference images. First, I'll upload my cabin sketch for the composition reference, and then upload the same image of the poppies for the style reference image. 
Under Effects, I'll choose Techniques, and I'll add that same watercolor effect. But in this instance, I want Photoshop to generate cabins in each of the four seasons. To do this, I will click Add Variable, and in between the square brackets, I'll add Spring, Summer, Winter, and Fall. Now we can quickly generate 16 images. This time we'll have four different cabins in four different seasons. 7. To quickly remove wires and cables from an image, choose the Remove tool. I'll create a new blank layer and choose to sample all layers to work non-destructively. I'll disable Generative AI just to demonstrate that when I choose Find Distractions and then Wires and Cables, this feature uses a different algorithm that doesn't hallucinate and it doesn't go to the cloud, so you can use it without internet connectivity. Now, wires and cables doesn't remove the poles, so I'll set the mode to auto and disable remove after each stroke, and that way I can paint over both of these two remaining poles. I'll click the check mark to remove the areas, and because the mode is set to Auto, the Remove tool has the option of using several different technologies under the hood depending on the contents of the image and the size of the area that you're removing. 8. The Adjustment Brush has an Object Selection option that can be enabled in the Options bar. Now Photoshop will automatically detect objects in the image, and when I click to select them, Photoshop creates a mask based on that area so that when we make our adjustments, only that area in the image is affected. Number 9. Bullets and Numbering. If you already have a list in your image, you can apply bullets or numbering by selecting the type layer and, in the Properties panel, applying bullets or numbering. You can then select from a number of different styles. Or you can simply start typing a list. With the Type tool selected, I'll enter 1, period, and then Syrup, and then tap Return. Photoshop will auto-detect that I'm creating a list and automatically insert the next number. When I tap Return again, it will continue adding to the list. If you don't care for the automated behavior, we can choose Settings and then Type. Again, on Windows, that would be under the Edit menu and disable automatic detection of bulleted and numbered lists while typing. For the tenth feature, I'll return to the Remove tool. Currently, this feature is only available in the beta version of Photoshop. So in the beta, the Remove tool is using a new, unique, generative AI model, which should result in fewer objects being inserted into the removal area. Plus, it has better blending, pattern matching, and better object reconstruction. I'll create a new layer to work non-destructively, set the mode to Generative AI on to make sure that it uses the model, enable both Sample All Layers, and Remove After Each Stroke, and then Paint around the second bird. Photoshop will then remove the distracting element. To remove additional elements, I'll use the Selection Brush set to 100% and I'll paint over these areas. Then I'll paint over these areas as well. This time I'll use the Contextual Taskbar and click Remove. This method uses the same new Generative AI model as the Remove tool, but when using the Remove button, notice that Photoshop automatically creates a new layer named Remove Tool Edits and it places the results on that layer for the non-destructive workflow. Excellent! To find out more information on other improvements, be sure to check out the additional videos using the links below. I'm Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.